Time now for your morning rush. We start with Sarah Yingling. She's covering the flooding in Berlin. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Crystal. As you can see, crews have been working to clear the dirt and debris from streets throughout Berlin. But a more pressing matter, the retention pond that recently was just installed a few years ago west of I-25. Officials say it's now at capacity and could breach, spilling over onto the interstate. According to the news bulletin, MRGCD crews have stopped additional irrigation water from going into the ditch. Pressure is being alleviated to the north. The Red Cross has opened a shelter at H.T. Jaramillo Elementary School. Those affected by the flooding should call 505-966-2748 for additional information. Back to you. Well, this morning, Rio Rancho police say Paseo del Volcan is back open. This is after more than two inches of rain came down yesterday, flooding the street under Enchanted Hills Boulevard. Now, last night, firefighters had to rescue a driver after they say he did not realize that the water was that deep. Meanwhile, in the northern part of the state, state police say that Highway 64 near Eagle Nest is uh, reopened this morning after a large mudslide in that area. Of course, we'll continue to follow the very latest from yesterday's rain and floods. You can find all the information you need to know at always on KRQE.com. Kristen. More storms expected today with the bullseye over the northern mountains and higher trend of western New Mexico. Isolated thunderstorms elsewhere, including the Albuquerque area, so not nearly as widespread as what we had on Thursday. But tomorrow looks to be a little bit more active. More storms and showers out there. The risk of flooding continues. David. This morning, the man found guilty of murdering his family is now waiting to see if the DA's office will decide if he should be charged with rape. A warning, some, of the, some might find the details of this disur disturbing. Police say in May, an MDC inmate reported that another inmate allegedly performed a sexual act on Nehemiah Griego. Investigators say it was captured on video. The DA's office has now placed a protective order on the case as the inmate who reported the act says he's afraid of what Griego might do to him. On to news happening right now, UNM is working with the Board of Regents to permanently ban a man from campus. He's charged in connection with trespassing on campus. Police say Jose Barron first tried disguising himself to steal from students. Then police received another call saying someone had snuck into Johnson Center's locker rooms. Barron was taken into custody, but police say no stolen items were found on him. About two weeks ago, UNM police say staff found him going through a restricted area of the Student Union building. And this morning, APD is still unsure if the remains unearthed on Tuesday are connected to the killings of the 11 women and one unborn child discovered nine years ago in the West Mesa. Now, the new finds are at the future site of a neighborhood park. Police continue to search the site where construction crews made the discovery of those remains. And that's about a quarter mile from the burial site of the West Mesa murder victims. On to new news this morning. The president looking for a new head for the Environmental Protection Agency. This after Scott Pruitt steps down. Pruitt was facing more than a dozen investigative inquiries into his first class travel, treatment of staff, ethics and even spending. President Trump said the resignation was Pruitt's own decision. His temporary replacement is Deputy Chief Andrew Wheeler, a former lobbyist for the coal industry. Meanwhile, New Mexico lawmakers continue to chime in on this and they speak out about Pruitt's resignation. Representative Michelle Lujan Grisham is tweeting in part, Scott Pruitt was not fit to work in the private sector and that the next EPA chief must be devoted to protecting our air, land and water. Meanwhile, Senator Tom Udall writes on Twitter that he, in regards to Pruitt, treated his position as a golden ticket for his own personal benefit. And Senator Martin Heinrich is tweeting his resignation is long overdue. On to some summer news for you. The flooded cave in Thailand where a soccer team is trapped has claimed its first victim, one of the volunteer rescuers, a former Thai Navy SEAL. Thai officials say the 38-year-old died from lack of oxygen while placing oxygen tanks around the cave overnight. Crews have been working to deliver oxygen to the 12 boys and their coach. Heavy rain is on the way to the area, intensifying the race to get everyone to safety. Again, that rescuer was trying to make their way back out. That's when he uh, was not able to, he didn't have enough oxygen, I should say, along with him. This morning, a trailer that was stolen from a local animal rescue is nowhere to be found. The Daily Lobo reports a trailer used for mobile adoptions was stolen from the People's Anti-Cruelty Association back in May. The nonprofit says it was full of pet supplies. Volunteers say the missing trailer cost them $7,000 to replace. So they're asking for donations to help replace those supplies. A link to donate is on KRQE.com. Happening right now, fire crews continue investigating this morning what may have caused two fires to break out along the Bosque in the past couple of days. AFR was called out to Sunset and Central yesterday after reports of smoke in that area. And a small brush fire not far from yesterday's two-acre fire was found and quickly contained. Kristen.
Today's Metro Threat Index up to a 5, looking at breezy conditions at times. Those winds about 10 to 20 miles per hour out of the east southeast. A spot storm possible. The flooding risk will continue underneath those heavier storms and showers. We're going to continue to keep eyes on that, not only today, but through this weekend. Crystal? New details now. Unexpected construction costs are what the city says is causing the delayed opening of the Penguin Chill exhibit at the Biopark. The exhibit was set to open earlier this year. It's now slated to open next spring. The city is now citing an extra $632,000 worth of construction costs, which they say is slowing the timeline and bumping the total price to $13 million. The city says a 10% contingency fund will pay for the extra costs. Happening now, the city is offering a new incentive to try and help save water in your yard. For decades, the Albuquerque Water Utility Authority has offered rebates on appliances that save water inside your home. But now, they want to do the same for outside your home by offering rebates on water-saving gadgets. One example is a smart controller that manages watering based on the weather. Now, For, for more information on this, you can head to always on KRQE.com. Kristen? Time now for a check on your Friday morning commute. Looking at the map, no major incidents out there this morning. We also have a live look outside. Just keep in mind, low-lying areas might still be dealing with some ponding. Looking ahead for you, the annual Lavender Festival is this weekend. Some of the money raised will help send kids to a camp teaching them about farming. This year, 90 vendors are offering lavender-based products that include food and art. Organizers say the festival serves as the only fundraiser for the Los Ranchos camp program. Now that camp teaches disadvantaged children about everything from how to farm to the importance of recycling. For more details on this, go to always on at krqe.com. Time now for the five facts. At number five, millions are rooting for a budding couple who met on a plane. One of them has ties right here to New Mexico. Yuan Holden played soccer for the Lobos back in 2008 and 2009. He now lives in the Dallas area. Yuan was traveling back home on July 2nd when a couple who wanted to sit together asked to trade seats with a woman. Now this paired Yuan, who was single, next to a single girl, and the pair headed off. And the other couple captured it all on social media, dubbing it Plain Bay. Holden says he hopes the story can show others that happiness might be around the corner. Aw, how sweet is that? Number four, now the city is asking for your suggestions on how to make roads safer. The Mid-Region Council of Governments recently released a report of the most dangerous roads in Albuquerque. They do include Coors, Montgomery, Central, and Wyoming. One idea is to help cut down on dangerous crashes by slowing traffic in high-risk areas by reducing the number of lanes or track down speeders and people who are texting while driving. We did put the plan and a link to comment on our website that's always on krqe.com. At number three, isolated storms today, more spotty to scattered as we get into the weekend. Temperatures staying in those mid to upper 80s. Looks like we'll see more of those storms and showers early next week. Top threat will be flooding overnight. Not bad, 60s for the next six to seven nights. At number two this morning, the man found guilty of murdering his family is now waiting to see if the DA's office will determine if he should be charged with rape. Nehemiah Griego now stands accused of this sex crime from behind bars. Police say in May, an MDC inmate reported that another inmate performed an act on Griego, which is not allowed in jail. Now, investigators say the inmate who performed the act is developmentally delayed. Griego is at MDC waiting to see if he'll be resentenced as an adult in the other crime. On to number one now. We're following breaking news out of Belen for you. This morning, Valencia County Fire officials tell us crews are frantically working on making repairs to the now breached Highline Canal that sent water gushing into low lying areas of the village and into homes along Mesa Road. City Council already declaring this a disaster to free up resources. City crews wasting no time getting to work. This morning, via Facebook, the crews the city, I should say, says trucks are now pumping water out of the streets. Another pressing issue, though, officials say they're now keeping an eye on I-25, saying a flood pond to the west of the interstate is at capacity. According to the Valencia County News Bulletin, for many, the damage is already done, though. Just hours ago, a new video shows water reaching the doorsteps of many homes there. If you want more information about possible shelters or more details on how you could get help, go to alwaysonkrqe.com.